testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Um, it's good to be back. I was out of town Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I got back Sunday, but I ended up doing a show. Uh, I was in Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma for the Franco Maloney card. I uh, got to cover that. That was a good time. Um, guys, I got tons of new content on that on my channel um, on Texas Boxing Scene. Not the channel. If you go to Texas Boxing Scene, I've got lots of coverage. I got uh, exclusive interviews that no one else got with... Uh, both Josh Franco and his brother, the undefeated uh, light flyweight phenom, Bam Rodriguez. Uh, so please, please, please uh, check that out. Um, but I um, want to get into today's show, um, which is uh, you know, Guillermo Rigondeau. Was he robbed? And um, I just want to, I, I, I want to break that down a bit. I want to break that down a bit. Um because he was, um, and, and I want to get into that. I want to make that clear. I, I get that many of you might not like the fight. You guys don't like. You don't think he was fighting to win. That he was running. I know there's not a meme. It's not a meme. It's a picture of the fight of him running from Casemiro. I, I, I get that a lot of you guys did not like the way that he fought. Okay, that doesn't change the fact that he won the fight because he won the fight. Um. I don't even think it was close. I don't even, you know, the, 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 the three cards, um, 115, 113 uh, in favor of Rigo, and then the other two, 117, 111, Robin Hoyle. We're going to get into that. And then Daniel Sandoval, uh, 116, 112, another terrible card. E even the card in Rigo's favor is too close. Um, I can't see Rigo. I mean, Casemiro winning more than three rounds in this fight. He didn't land. He won the first, the fifth, and the ninth on my card. Maybe you can get him one more. You can't get him nine like Hoyle. You can't get him eight like Sandoval. There's something seriously wrong there. And, and, and these kind of things, you know, Rigo has absolutely no luck. I mean, none. Um, he clearly won this fight. Was it? The performance you wanted? No. Um, was it a masterpiece? No. Was it an exciting good fight? No. That being said, Rigondeau won the fight. He was nailing him with straight right hands. He was landing clean, powerful shots. Not many of them. Neither guy threw or landed much. Casemiro landed nothing outside of the first and the fifth and the ninth. You just can't give him any other rounds. They gave him the third. He landed one punch. I mean, there's just no way he won these rounds. Again, and I'm not a copy box freak, but copy box sometimes helps. You know, it 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 it, it brings to life what you think you saw, right? And it it. It was accurate in the sense that not, neither guy landed much. But if I said to you, let's look at these rounds, and you tell me who landed the cleaner shots, who was dictating, you know, who was in charge in the ring, who was dictating his fight. It's Regan Dow, round after round after round. I, I thought 117-111 was the right score in favor of Rigo. I can get to 116 and There's just no rounds that you can give to Casemiro. You know, that there's... There's a comparison, I guess, to Sergio Mora and Shane Mosley uh, when they fought and no one landed anything. But this is like it because Rigo landed shots. Now, he may have landed two straight lefts, but when he's making Casemiro chase him around the ring and Casemiro lands nothing, Rigo wins the round. This, I mean, there's no other way to look. There's no other way to score it. So I want to get into the scorecards, Right. Uh, Robert Hoyle is a judge that's used all the time. I don't think he's a terrible judge. He's got some weird school of cards. He's got one that came to mind besides this one. And that he has uh, 114, 113, um, a new way over um, uh, Donaire. There's no way that was an even fight 
plus a knockdown, right? So he had seven, he had six six, and the knockdown being the difference. That fight wasn't that close. Okay, that's one bad card. Um, this is bad. This is really, really bad. I'm not giving Daniel Sandoval a pass either because his card is atrocious too. Uh, but Hoyle had the widest. And, and just two weeks before that, I, I thought he had a great card. He had 106-103 um, Sansu in front of Lee Wood. That was the closest of the three score cards. And that's exactly how I had it. I thought it was right. You go back uh, a couple weeks before that, at the Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles, he he, he was uh, the 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 only judge that had a reasonable scorecard in the James Wilkins uh, Brian Chevalier fight. Uh, he had it 95-94 Chevalier. Most people thought Wilkins won. I thought 95-94 one way or the other was where it was at. He went one way, I went the other. At least he, he was in the ballpark with that. Um, so those are a couple of you know recent fights. Um, where he was right. Um, I, I'm just giving this a quick look through. I mean, he's not a he's he used a lot because he doesn't have a bunch of terrible scorecards. This is a terrible scorecard. This is this is this is this is heinous. And again, I, I I don't think he's terrible. I think he's a solid judge. I I think he should be used more. But this is inexcusable. This card. It cannot be justified. It can't be justified. It's that bad. Um, yeah, he hasn't. I mean, going back more than... I feel like he's been used more. Going back to 2019. Raymond Beltran, P Pedraza. No, he had that reasonable. I mean, this is not a terrible judge. All right, Kendall Castaneda over Jose Gutierrez. He had that way too close. He only had Castaneda winning by a point. He's got some, but after this, he needs to go on the suspended list because this is so bad. Show me nine rounds that Casemiro won. Sit him down and make him explain that scorecard because it can't be explained. It's that bad. He's absolutely, I mean, and, and this is a guy who I think he's done a good job in other fights. But until he can explain nine rounds that Casemiro won, Something else is going on here. And then Sandoval's call card is almost as bad, 8-4. There's no way. Casemiro, he didn't land any punches. You can't win if you're chasing a guy around missing, not landing anything. You can't win. You're, you're, you're fighting the other guy's fight, and you're not landing anything. So how did you win the round? Guys, this isn't Michael Fox, okay? Nothing as bad as Michael Fox. That, that was the worst decision ever. But this is egregious. This is terrible. This is worse than Pacquiao Bradley. This is worse than any fight. This is awful. And I know you guys don't like the fight. And you're not mad because you don't think Rio did much. It doesn't matter if he did much. He won the round. Right? It's like when the Knicks used to play the Bulls back in the Bulls, Michael Jordan's Bulls, and Pat Riley's Knicks would play back in the 90s. And the Bulls would beat him 79-78. They won. Not much happened. But the Bulls won. Right? That This is indicative of that. Okay? Not much happened. Scroll around for someone. Rigo wins. There's not much. There's not much to argue about. Like if one guy makes you chase him around, hits you with a couple of hands, and you land nothing, the other guy wins. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, this is. I think this code card stinks. I think it's a major problem. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, please go to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Check out the interview with Josh Franco, Bam Rodriguez. Um, Subscribe to that channel. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, it's completely get dedicated to Texas Boxing. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.